Welcome to this Cubase Q&A video where I answer questions related to Cubase. Chris here from Mixdown Online. I hope you're doing good and I actually hope you're doing good. We're in March 2020 and the world is going nuts. We're living some very weird, weird times. So anyways, um, uh, what I want to do here today is to answer a few questions that I received from you guys related to Cubase so we can keep our minds off what's going on right now, at least for a few minutes. So if you're new here on the channel, feel free to subscribe to the channel to click the notification bell. And if you think that the video is helpful, share and like. All right, so now let's start with question number one. Chris, is there a way to easily create a track with the audio of the metronome? I am exporting stems to collaborate with another musician, and I would like to include a track with the metronome. Okay, so now let me show you how that works. It's super simple and very, very fast. First, I'm gonna make sure that I like the sound of the click that I have. I'm gonna click on, I'm gonna open metronome setup at the bottom right, right here, okay? And I'm gonna click on click sounds, uh, which is gonna give me access to all the sounds um, that I can choose from for my metronome. So right at the bottom, I have a click sound preset. I'm gonna click and the mine is already selected to wood block, which is the one that I like. Um, okay, I'm gonna click on okay once I'm done and uh, let's have a, just a quick listen. Now I wanna export that sound or print that sound on a separate track. So I won't need to just activate the click uh, within Cubase. So to do so, it is very, very simple. What you need to do is to first set up your left and right locators right here on top. So I'm gonna start by setting up the, uh, the left locator right on top and uh, next the right locator. So if I click on Alt or Option and I just click with my mouse on the top, that will set up the right locator. And for the left locator, just so you know, it's a com command or control and that will uh, set up the left locator. Or you can just, uh, if you see it, you can just drag it down and do that manually if you prefer, which works as well. Once the right and left locators are, uh, are set up, what you are gonna do is to go up to project, go down to a signature track, and then render audio click between locators. And that's it. That's the only thing you need to do. And look, that, look at the bottom here. I have my click. Now I'm gonna deactivate the click within Cubase and just listen to the one I just printed. That simple. Okay, very, very practical and fast. Okay, so this, this is the most important thing. It is super fast to do so. So if you wanna collaborate with your friend, um, it is a very easy way to do so. You can also, instead of using audio, if you want, you can do the same, go back to project, down to signature track, and uh, click on render MIDI click between locators if you prefer. So if you wanna send only a MIDI track so uh, your collaborator can use his own click sound, you can also do it this way and that will create a MIDI track with um, some MIDI notes basically. Uh, so this is how you can do it. Now let's go with question number two. At the insert section, when I click on the arrow pointing down on an empty field, I get my effects insert option. No effects, delay, EQ, mastering, other, and so on. Picture included. But is there a way to move things around and organize things by personal taste, like changing the names on the different categories, etc.? Okay, let me show you how that works. Yes, there is. And I am gonna show that to you right away. Uh, first, what you are gonna need to do is to go on Studio on top and click on VST Plugin Manager. And this is where you're gonna be able to set up uh, different uh, categories of plugins so you can customize the list of plugins to your taste. Now, by default, you will have your list 
as is. So if you uh, you click on a track, let's uh, open, let's click on this one, click on inserts, you're gonna get the list as is, and you can click on your arrow and select by a category or by vendor. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to category, and this is what you originally um, have by default. I'm gonna go back now to Studio and uh, VST Plugin Manager. Um, now, the default, uh, the default display, the default categories cannot be changed. So you cannot change the default collection. Uh, what you can do though, is to create yourself new collections, as many as you want with new folders and so on. And this is what I'm gonna show you uh, just by clicking on the plus sign right here, which is gonna open the new collection window. And uh, let's create an empty one and call this one Cubase, okay? So let's create a collection that is gonna include only Stangberg's plugins. That's it. Now my collection is empty, okay? So if I go on the insert and I select Cubase as a collection, there's no plugins. I can go back and select um, default. I'm gonna get back to the default collection. All right, so now, I'm gonna go back to my studio and uh, down to plugin VST, to VST plugin manager. And I'm gonna select uh, Cubase. So this is my collection. And as you can see, I have, I have other collections uh, going on also. So I'm gonna stay on the Cubase one and I'm gonna add plugins. And the only thing you need to do if you wanna add plugins to that collection is only to drag and drop the plugins that you want from the left side of the plugin manager window to the right side. So now I wanna drag all those uh, those Cubase plugins. I'm gonna just click on vendor so I can sort that out by vendor. And I'm gonna go down to Stangberg and uh, select the first one, shift and the last one on the list, drag them over and there you go, that simple. Now that collection has all Cubase plugins or Steinberg plugins. So if I go back to insert um, and I make sure my uh, collection is set up to Cubase, all I have as plugins are Cubase plugins. Um, what I can also do is create folders. So I'm gonna go back to studio, go down to um, VST plugin manager and let's create a folder. Let's call this one compressor or compressors. I'm gonna have more than one and click on OK. I can also create one for EQ, one for reverb, okay? And from that point on, I can just drag and drop again from the left side or from the list that I have right here. So let's say I wanna just uh, drag those two compressors to the compressors um, folder. There you go. Now I have two plugins in that folder and so on. So you just can do that manually to your taste, customize those lists uh, for your for your needs, basically. Um, and then they're all gonna be accessible from the right zone as well. So if I click on media, the media tab on the right zone of the project window, click on effects. Um, now, again, my Cubase collection is gonna be there by default since the Cubase collection is the one selected at the moment. I can also select the default one. You know that. So let's go back to the Cubase one. And as you can see, I have access to all of my plugins and also my folders. Okay. And this is how you can do it. So you can customize everything by uh, working within the VST uh, plugin manager that you can also access within the right zone. So if you click on that small arrow, uh, you, you can select different uh, collections and also open the plugin manager from that window also, okay? So I hope that answers your question. Now let's jump on question number three. Do the differences between exporting a mix and printing a mix in the project still make you personally choose one over the other? Now that question is related to a video that I posted maybe three weeks ago about um, exporting your mix um, in real time versus off time versus printing the mix directly in Cubase on a stereo track. Uh, so if you wanna watch that video, I'm gonna leave the link on top and down below. Um, so basically on my end, um, there's times where I'm gonna use the offline, uh, the offline export, which is a bit faster depending on where you are with your production and of course the speed of your computer. So I'm gonna use offline uh, exports 
uh, especially when I'm arranging a song uh, in the recording stage and I need to bounce my rough mix or rough recording uh, mix uh, and send that to the client. This is where I'm going to use offline export, which is going to be way faster. Um, and there's no use for me to use at this point real-time export. Now, the exception to the rule is if I'm using an outboard gear like my uh, Space Echo that I have here in the back. Uh, now, when I'm going to use that delay, which is a hardware delay uh, that I plug in directly as a hardware unit in Cubase, um, now, in that case, I'm, I'm not going to have any choice. I'm going to have to export in real-time, but usually what I'm, what I'm going to be doing is once I'm happy with the sound of the delay that I want, I'm just going to print that that sound, that delay on a separate track in Cubase, so I won't need to use that um, hardware anymore afterwards. So from that point on, I'll be able to bounce offline. Now, when I mix, that will depend where I am in the mix. If I'm exporting my final mix, I'm going to do a real-time export just to be able to monitor what's uh, what is exporting at the same time as I export. And this is something you can do with Cubase Pro. You can export your mix in real time and at the same time you listen to your mix as the mix is bouncing, which is quite practical. Um, so I tend to do that more than printing the mix within Cubase. Uh, it's just a personal choice. If I need just to bounce a mix for a client for mix revisions, I most of the time I'm just gonna do an offline, um, an offline bounce. And that's it, just to save a bit of time. Um, and that's about it, you know. But to the exception, again, if I'm using outboard gear when I mix, which I tend to do, um, like using my um, Tegler Creme stereo bus compressor. And also, I started to use a bit of the Stam Audio. It's a, you know, it's an emulation of a Paltec EQ, which sounds pretty good on vocals. Um, I'm going to talk about that, um, that EQ on another video. But, you know, in that case, I won't have a choice. I'm going to have to export in real time because I'm using hardware. Okay, now let's jump on question number four. Hey, Chris, there is no sound coming out when I export in real time. How can I fix that? Okay, let's just set up the locators. I'm just going to do a quick... A quick one right here. I'm going to click on export, and this is what I have. So let's say, um, let's set that up to wave, all right, and make sure I have real time export selected. I'm using Cubase Pro. If I'm uh, if I use real time export, I'm going to see that window, and I'll be able to monitor what's coming out as I export. Okay, and there's the audition volume that I can play around with also. Um, now, the reason why um, that doesn't work on your side is probably because you are not using the control room. And this is a feature that is only available on Cubase Pro, okay? The control room will give you access to that audition volume. If you don't have the control room, like for example, I'm just gonna deactivate the control room. And uh, there you go, I'm just gonna set up my uh, outputs to one and two. So if I open the export uh, window and click on real-time export, this is what I'm going to get without the control room. So I'm going to get the same, the same window, but without the audition volume option. And the reason is because I'm not using the control room. So this is something that is important if you want to have access to that feature and you're using Cubase Pro, use the control room. Activate the control room, set up your monitor, to your regular output, and this way you'll be able to export in real time and monitor your mix as you export and also have access to the audition volume. All right, my friends, this is gonna be it for today. I hope that was helpful. If so, share and like this video. And if you have any other questions or comments, you can leave everything down below. All right, my friends, take care. And with everything that is happening right now, stay safe. <laughs>